Oh, you did? Yeah. <laughs> With my nose. Hey, John Rife. What's up? Looking good with that blue sky behind you. It's a beautiful day to do some beekeeping here on the roof. We are on the roof of East End Market. Check out these views. I feel like we're at the beach. <laughs> Installing. This might be arguably, this is the first rooftop beehive in Orlando. It might be the first one that is legit like all the insurances all the approvals you know i'm sure there's some some co-op ones but um uh-huh i think this is it and if not if nothing else like just to encourage other people to do it is is the point so so this is a nuclear hive so what's a, nu a nuclear hive a nuclear hive like a, a mother father two kids yeah, like your nuclear family uh-huh um nu a nuke hive is five frames with a queen and the worker bees and nurse bees to make a start so we'll take the five frames out of this hive and put them into these two hive bodies. And then we'll give them a little bit of sugar water to help get them started building some comb. And then uh, we'll leave them alone for a couple days, let them get settled, and then uh, they'll be good to go. Why are you hot boxing them? Well, I'm hot boxing <laughs> yeah. them? I mean, up here on the roof? Yeah, with this. Like, oh, okay. So you tell people what's yeah. up with the smoke? So, so the reason you smoke is um, when they smell it, two things happen. They think, hey, the forest might be on fire. Everybody eat all the honey, we may have to escape. So they eat all the honey, they get lethargic, they don't wanna be angry and mad. They, they just had a big buffet layoff. Um, the other reason is bees communicate a lot with pheromones. So when they start getting pissed off, they start letting off pheromones. And particularly if they sting you, when they pull their body apart, sadly, it lets off a smell. And so the smoke helps cover that smell. Otherwise one bee stings you and then the rest go, it's mm. party time, time to sting like crazy. So, um, good to know. Yeah, we've, we've, we've smoked them enough. And what I'll do is I'll just bring the frames out, show you what's going on before we um, go to the next one. We're coming, guys. We're coming, ladies. Ladies. Hide your husbands, ladies. <laughs> Here we come. Give them a little bit of smoke, get them to calm down a bit. Just keep in mind, they, they operate in full darkness inside the hive, so bright sunlight for them is like, something's clearly wrong. So this whole experience for them is very jarring. Yeah, so we're trying to do it as quickly as possible. So hang the smoker there. This is a hive tool, you use it to pry things apart. Because um, of the wax? Yeah, the wax, and they also have a thing called propolis, which is like a really uh, heavier wax. It's like resin from trees that they use to really glue things in place. Okay. Um, propolis. Propolis. And it's actually, they use it in um, as a tincture, so people collect it. And so that and the pollen. So there's really three products from hives. Pollen, oh, I guess four. Pollen, propolis, wax, and um, honey. What is the, is there a medicinal use for propolis? So, um, there must be. I mean, they make a tincture out of it. I don't know what they use it right. for, but. So this is just, you can see this is like plain um, plastic foundation that they spray with wax so that they start to draw a comb. So see how it's yellow, more yellow around the edges? Yes. And they're starting to draw a comb. Like they're starting to make comb. So when it's really raw and untouched, it's more yellow. Yes. Okay. And so it'll be actually, it's really, it's quite white. So I'll show you, hopefully we'll see some of that. Yeah. So put that in here. You're doing great, ladies. You seem to be, you seem to be quite content. You're very delicate. Yeah, you don't want to squeeze anything. If you squeeze them too, that, oh wow, that's really heavy. So there's a lot. Ooh, look okay. how dark that so is. Can you see all the glistening in there? Yeah. That's all honey. Look at all that honey, y'all. Yeah, that's all honey. Someone's eating too. Look at them all. They're like, mmm. Yeah. And they smell the smoke. See how they're all getting in there? Yeah. That's it's, it's the, what they're doing their job. What's with the caps? So the caps, so you could eat this, this honey, right. but it, you couldn't store it. It still has too much water in it. Once it's capped, they have dehydrated it enough to last kind of in perpetuity. So when you go to harvest wax, you're looking for frames that are fully covered um, with caps. All right, so. 
That pine smoke smells delicious. Yes. Here we've got capped brood. So brood is a word for babies or larvae or things that are gonna turn into bees. But those are capped brood, not capped honey. So if you look at, I'll show you here. So like that's capped brood, but this is capped honey. This is the most baller thing right now. You have it on your leg. Yeah. <laughs> My mom used to eat brood. She'd like, you could eat them like candy. Uh, I'm sure it's protein, yeah. but that's, that's scary. <laughs> I wouldn't do that to my ladies. Um, so that's great. So that means those are all bees that are gonna hatch in the next probably week. And then none here, but I'm just looking, you can't really see. I'm looking to see if they've got, so you can see they're starting to store some pollen. So see those little orange yeah. stores? Yeah. That's, that's them storing pollen. And they bring pollen in in little baskets on their hips. So they go into into a flower to pollinate and they store the pollen in these baskets on their hips and they fly back in and- Little saddle bags. Yeah, exactly. You're doing a great job, John Reif. Hey, man. John Reif, owner, proprietor, operator of East End Market, getting down and dirty <laughs> with his so, ladies. Lots more brood, which is great, because that means that these Nice and healthy. Yeah, and you can look. <gasps> if you look right there, those Did are larvae. Did you just blow on the bees? Yeah, those little white dots in there. Those little white C-shaped thing are larvae. Once they get to a certain age, they cover them, and then it's like a cocoon. So then they metam transmorph, wow. metamorphosize into Can you bees. give it another blow? That was the coolest thing I've ever seen. Yeah, it gets them out of the way. All right. So you can see what's in there. He's married, lady. Settle down. <laughs> <laughs> so. Wow. And this, so they're eating right now. Yeah, and, and actually, so around this, the edges of here, there's also little um, eggs. So I'm also looking for tiny little white dots in the base of these, and um, and I'm looking for larvae, just to make sure, because I'm not, I don't see the queen specifically. If I, if I see the queen, I'll point her out. Okay. But as long as there's eggs and very young, like one to two day old larvae, they can make a queen if for some reason she didn't make it in the box. But we're, so. she's generally marked, right? Uh, yeah, you can't, it wouldn't, these, this one won't be. Okay. But you can, you can take your queen and they normally mark them with different colors so you know what year she is. Because queens are usually good for up to three years. Um, and then they elect to do one. They do. And, and the election process is not good for the old queen. Um, so they... No shade. Yeah, they, <laughs> they, they breed a new queen and they fight to the finish and... Wow. Whoever wins is the new queen. That girl didn't make it. So. Hey ladies. Wow, look at all the honey in there. Yeah, that's crazy. How heavy is that? Yeah, here, feel it. Could just put one finger up, there you go. Wow, John, it's so heavy. Yeah, so a full, um, a full box can, you can probably get about two and a half gallons of honey out of it. Um, and it's probably 50 to 60 pounds when it's full. So lots of honey in there. This, this hive has, and lots of, lots of um, pollen. Pollen is their protein. And where did these ladies come from? So these are from D and J Apiary, which is out in Umatilla. They will bring a truck down to the Orange Blossom Beekeepers Association meeting, which is at the IFAS office here in uh, down on Conway. Okay. And so at, once a month on Thursdays, they, you can purchase gear and they'll bring it down. So rather than paying shipping or buy out of state, so, um, I love it. They're Florida born they are. local They're, ladies. They are Florida born local ladies. So. These ones don't know they can leave yet. So, what you do, it's a little unceremonious, but you actually drop them in there. Oh. Do you want me to film this? Yeah, you can drop them. <laughs> I want to see how much of a gentleman you are. So, is the water just perspiration? No, the water, they put the water in there so that the bees had something to drink while they were stuck in there. Oh. Wow. Oh, then, so this, like, that expanding onto the box is just because they were in there too long? Yeah, and so what I'll do, yes, correct, they were packing to it. So they probably did these a few weeks ago. Okay. Uh, made them. So I'll leave this up here next to it, and they will smell the queen inside the hive and go into it at some point. I want to get a shot of you. Wow, this is beautiful. They're dancing. They are, they're here. They're I feel like we're in fried green tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll put one extra blank frame in there. Okay. 
And there's no difference between yellow or black foundation. But black, black is sexy. It's easier to see the, the larvae and stuff. Ah, but is that, that a new thing? Um, so most, most of my other hives, I don't use plastic foundation. Um, I use just wax foundation. So I'll, sh I'll show you the difference. So. Oh, they already, already like it. There. So see, this is hard, hard plastic. You can buy like, it's just wax. And if you go to a restaurant and you have it where the wax, like they have a, a honeycomb, you can't take that off of this. Uh. Like it's a straight cut through. So you want to be doing straight wax foundation when you're going to do um, cell comb. So why did you do plastic this time? It is way more... Um, Cost effective. No, it's actually it's more expensive, but they build it out more uniformly. So when you go to harvest the honey, it's a lot less lumpy. Okay. Because like that, you put the wax room in there and it gets melty sort of, and they don't quite do it perfectly. So then this is a feeder. So I'm gonna fill this up. They have these, um, this mesh so the bees can climb down in there and not drown. Oh. Um, so they'll climb down, they can access the honey or the ladder. syrup. Yeah, so I'll start pouring some of that in. What kind so of sugar just, do you like to use? So I've tried everything. Um, and honestly what's best is the most, un, the most refined, like worst for a human being type of sugar like refined bright white sugar. Um, I've done raw sugar, I've done organic sugar, and a bee, another beekeeper said that those will give them indigestion, which oh. I'm not like looking to see if they're having indigestion. Yeah, they're like, oh, my tummy. I take, I take their word for it. Um, mm -hmm. So just start pouring this in. Drink up, ladies. So this whole thing will go in there? Um, a good amount. And I've got one more hive to do, another, another property, so. Put the reservoir. So I'm pretty good in there. All right. Hey, and John. Hey. Great job. Yeah, we did it. We're here. <laughs> Welcome home, ladies. So we'll put the top on. You give them a little little path to get out the top because they do get kind of lazy, and if they can fly into the top instead, they will. This was always, my mom was always the worst at this part. Yeah, you just got to go, and if you feel a little, a little something squish, you stop. It's too late. Yeah, you go slow. All right, done. They cooperated. Yeah, they did. John, you're kind of killing it. All right. That's it. Hey! There we go. Bees on the roof. How long until we'll have East End honey in our tea downstairs? So honestly, we, we are getting ready to go into the peak of our honey flow here in Central Florida. We're, at, we're kind of towards the end of what's called a dearth. So we've had basically two weeks where we haven't had a whole lot of, mm -hmm. of nectar and pollen. So we start coming into when... Um, the golden rain trees yeah, are about Brazilian to bloom. Brazilian pepper blooms. Like it's a, it's a great time for, for harvesting. So really right before Thanksgiving like is when I harvest. So it's appropriate time to be harvesting and then take it to all the holiday events. So probably I'd say uh, middle to end of November, we should have honey coming off of here. So it looks like they're settling near that exit. They're so what, they're, what they'll do is they'll start doing um, orientation flights. So they'll be like, well, clearly we're not where we were uh, yesterday. So they'll start flying around, getting their internal GPS going. They orient by the sun. So actually it's kind of not great that the sun's not perfectly out right now. For them. For them. For us, it's been spectacular. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's it. So we'll uh, give them some time to orient and they're quite quite content. They got a nice big new home and- They haven't been hassling us no, like, at I mean, all. We got Lou Gardens, you know, uh, half a mile from here. We got Meat Gardens, you know, another mile. Like they're gonna be doing some work in the in the neighborhood, so. Mango trees for days. They do. Macadamia nuts. Yes. All right, John, thanks yeah. so much for having me. Awesome, man, thanks for coming.